well, why not? Why not try to help the world realize who I am? Maybe in some way that will make me feel better too, you know? And maybe we'll learn something from each other in the process, which I think is what's happened here today. Hey guys, welcome to the final part of the Chris Van Dam interview, part five. If you've been watching the other videos in the series, I kept mentioning there's going to be four parts, but there's an extra one and we're going to go out with a bang. So really get to know Chris Van Dam a little better, get his unique insight and perspective into things. Also in this video, we're going to get a little more clarity on when Jean-Claude Van Dam earlier this year announced he's going to do one last film project. So of course I had to ask Chris about that. But anyway, if you like this kind of content, please help support the channel by hitting the like button, subscribing and sharing the video. Yeah, Referenced mm -hmm. earlier, you said your dad still has that fire and that passion like you do, right? And you wanna make films basically the rest of your life, which is great. Why did your dad decide, because I'm sure he had a discussion with you, that the last project he announced, it's gonna be his last film. Maybe as an actor, I don't know, maybe he's gonna direct, who knows, but is he just like tired? Is he just, because you, you said he still has the fire. And it sounds like this is going to be an amazing film. This is not going to be derailed. This is not going to be kill them all. Oh, it's wow. going to be so, it sounds so amazing with what they're trying to put together and, and maybe bringing back Michelle Kesey or maybe Bolo Young and like these other guys, such an amazing film. But <laughs> did he have a discussion with you saying, you know what, I, I'm just going to do one more. It's good. I'm going to go out with a bang. But I'm just going to do one more film. It's more one more martial arts film. You know, my, okay. my, my father loves movies. He really does. Um, and the fire of loving movies as that little boy looking at the silver screen in the, in the 60s and 70s is still inside. Um, it's cool because he's got all his tints and comics in his, in his office. And so he likes to look at them sometimes. And it's really cool to see that, the, not the child, but the, the pioneer come back out, you know? And um, uh, it, I don't think it'll be his last film. I think it, maybe it might be his last martial arts film mm. uh, in terms of a lot of, you know, a lot of work. Because at his age, even if he's in great shape, it takes a toll on the body. You know, it does. And, and uh, he, can, he can do it. It's just, he, I think he wants to go out with one good bang for his legacy. And I completely mm. understand. Um, to bring all the old guard back in, like TSC and, and Young would be, would be awesome. I know David Young very well. He's a good friend of mine. He's such a he's such a sweet guy, such a nice guy. And his father is still alive. Beautiful. It's, it's so beautiful just to, to, to see him. He's in great shape. My God, I think he's in his 80s. And he just <laughs> that's awesome, man. Having his 80s, he's just in such good shape. It's a, so inspiring. Um, and uh, to my dad too. He's so so much respect for Bolo and so much respect for Michelle. Mm -hmm. uh, many many years coming to the states. But I think, yeah, I've had a conversation, many conversations about it. You know, he would ask me sometimes, what do you think? Uh, I think I'm, you know, tired of movies. I've been around the world. I'm like, Dad, I know you're tired, of, you're tired of movies, but I know that deep down inside, you can't sit still and do nothing. I know you want to, you know, enjoy your life, which you do, but I know you're always going to have that want to be on the set. I just know it. It's, you're a good actor. You've become such a seasoned actor. You should really just once in a while do a select movie. Just produce something be a character you've never been and that's something that my brother and i are, are big on we always have a role reserved for him in our scripts as a compressed small guest role that has a huge impact in the movie but it's a character that he's never played before we can push his his acting abilities oh, that's beyond cool. what he's done so as an actor i know he's kind of like we bring a lamp he's opened this door uh to a whole new dimension of uh of evolution in his craft that he sees another platform he can jump to and say Boy, I could stay here, but I know I want to go there. Just jump, man. You got what it takes. And and that's and that's kind of uh, I think what his psychology is. He's still going. And I think he'll still do it until he's 80, 80 plus, maybe even in his nineties. Who knows? You know, it's funny because I I made a video discussing that topic, talking about like his last project and kind of giving my thoughts. And I came to the conclusion, I just don't think he's the kind of guy that would be content sitting on a beach you know, drinking margaritas the rest of his life. It's like, he's, he, he might want to do that for like a little while to relax, but he just seems like the guy that, that needs to work. Come on. How long do you think you can sit on your ass and watch the sunset? You're a hunter, Jack. Admit it. You missed the game. Obviously not for money, but because he's passionate about the work. 
that's why I always kind of thought like, you know, I think retirement is really like the worst thing and the last thing anybody should want. But I can understand it because most people hate their jobs and they only do it for the money. So in that aspect, of course you want to retire because you don't want to go to that dead end job or do some BS you don't want to do. But it's like, you got to find something you're passionate about. And then you never want to retire because that gives your life purpose and meaning. Sure. Absolutely. No, I agree with you. Um, and I think that's what it is. You know, he's wanted to be an actor since he was very young and he wanted to travel the world and see different kinds of animals and see different places of the world like Tintin did when you know, he grew up with those comics. And he wanted to live that adventure. And he did. And I think he feels like he's done a full circle. And uh, he knows there's more, but the body's fatigued, the mind and the soul are willing. You know, it's been through a lot physically. Uh, it's been through a lot. I was all bruised because I want real contact. But when you have real contact, you can see the face. No, no, I'm vibrating. But uh, he, um, I just know, I just know that he can't sit around like you're saying. It's, he can't. It just, it's not in his. And it's cool that you say that because it's, it shows. And when he speaks, and when he acts, it shows. And that's, I think, uh, the very reflection of the answer to the question you're asking. It, it, it shows in the way he speaks, his interviews, or even his, his acting abilities and his, his kicking abilities and his fighting abilities throughout his age. You know, it speaks miles, it speaks uh, generations. Yeah, I mean, he'll totally be like a Clint Eastwood guy. Just yeah. I mean, Clint Eastwood's probably, what, what 90 My brother now? and I always push for it. We're always like, come on, Dad, you can do this role. I can imagine you playing this type of character. That's uh, cool. Uh, you think so? Yeah, you could. Dad, we're telling you, you could. Let us direct you. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, it's a cool idea. It's a cool idea. It's, it's, you know, and just to try to, to try to motivate him as much as possible because he's got, he, he just, I don't, I, he doesn't have an ego like he used to when he was younger uh, because he was at the top of his game. I think he's really realized what acting is to really get the top of, of, of your game, you know, mm -hmm. and, and he's, he's become very humble with his age and very observant with things and more internal introspective than he was when he was in his thirties. Yeah. I mean, one last comment sure. I'll make, I know you got to go, but it's just Before gotta be, it's just gotta be so weird for someone like him or Mike Tyson or Michael Jordan or Conor McGregor, just anybody who is like at the, like you said, the top of their game, like the, the elite of the elite. It's just, how can that not go to your head and create an ego? I mean, you're making a ridiculous amount of money. You have all these fans and you're doing something that people just would love to do. Who wouldn't want to be a movie star or top basketball player or like the best fighter in the world? You know, it's just got to be such a weird experience because again you could count these people like there, there's not that many people out there there's yeah there's a lot of basketball players but how many michael jordans are there you know it's crazy it's just got to be such a weird experience man it's uh for michael jordan there's the court for my dad and bruce lee guys like lee there, there's the dojo and <clears throat> that's it mm -hmm. no matter how much money you make no matter where you've been how many girls you've been with all that stuff car you own you drive that's all great. It's fun. And we should live life and love it. But uh, when it comes back down to what you do, there's just the dojo, or the court, the field, whatever it is, whatever your craft is, the track. It's, it's for Valentino Rossi, it's the track. Yeah, and that makes away, sense, man. You take away the crowd, you still have fun, man. You take, mm -hmm. away the, you take away the cameras and the lighting, my dad's still practicing in the dojo. That, that, you know, it's still there. And that's I, that's, I think, what keeps them driving forward. They Maybe with success, you kind of get, you don't lose it, but you kind of get, you know, like a kite. You get loosened a bit, but the cord is always attached. And then you kind of come back down with age because things get weathered and you're more experienced. You know how to dodge the wind, the seagulls, all that stuff. And, you know, for lack of a better analogy. <laughs> but um, uh, that's, I think, what it comes down to. And then there are those people who aren't those one in a hundred people and they are always trying, trying, trying to get there, mm -hmm. you know, and, and good for them. Like Scott Atkins, for example, he's, a, he's, he's become a good actor. He's very good, but he's not, in my opinion, like Sheldon had his opinion about me. I have my opinion about people like Scott and I've done four movies with Scott, three movies. And I like, he's easy to work with. He's a very nice guy and he's, he's a hard worker. But is this his craft? Perhaps, perhaps, I don't know something he's got inside his, his belly, but 
is he a Bruce Lee or a Van Damme or an Arnold? Personally, I don't think so. Not, <laughs> yeah, you know he's not, not, man. He's not. I give him all the credit in the world. He's yeah, another guy. He's a very nice guy. But, he's but, another guy your dad inspired, and he's sure. done what he could do, you know, in, in the straight to video world, obviously. And uh, you know, he's a great martial artist, but yeah, like you said, oh, is he a Bruce Lee or a Van Damme? Of course not. And I, I've said that numerous times on my channel. I think you could do under siege, you could remake under siege with with Scott Adkins, for example. Ooh. I mean, you could, but would uh, it be any good? You know? um, like, look, it seems like a nice guy. He's talented, but he's not Bruce Lee or Van Damme, you know. But you know what? Respect to him for getting out there and doing it, just like all of us, you know. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, again, it's just an opinion. And it's better to, at some time, just say what you think and don't take it personally. And uh, just get some clarity out there like this podcast. I, I want, I'm want i doing this podcast because I want people to know that it's not that different being the son of a, an action star than being the son of someone who goes to the military mm -hmm. or, or someone who works uh, uh, a night shift at a hospital, you know, sleeps all day. Uh, there are different versions of distance, distant parenthood, the ch children, different versions of these, uh, these dilemmas or these situations that, that shape us. And some people suffer from it. Uh, some people go down a, a hole like Sage and it's sad what happened to him. He's such a nice guy, such a nice guy. And so misunderstood and so sad, such a, so sad. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, I don't know Sly. I don't know S S S Sylvester Stallone, how easy this kid. I have no right to say anything. I can just say, I kind of understand because I'm the son of a mega action star like my father, who's <clears throat> in effect millions of people in the world. It must be a lot to deal with. Well, he's, it's, he's a different person at home than he is on the movie set. You know, he's so relaxed. Yeah. And sometimes it's easy and sometimes it's tough. It's just part of life. We're all human. You know, no one's perfect. But uh, what entertains me is, is how passionate people are about, I know it's like this because I'm the biggest fan and, and I, I'm a, I just know it's like that. She is a very matter of factly, like kind of the oh, know-it-all yeah. type. I'm the complete, <laughs> I, I'm like a lot different, different personality type, but that, that's why we kind of argued in that video and disagreed so much. But how can, is, how can the little kid, kid make it himself? Company. How can the little kid make it himself? No, not a little kid. They're adults. They're in their thirties. They, now, they, I'm not talking about now. I'm talking about them growing up into becoming a movie star. Yeah, he see, I don't think, like if you're a child actor, he should have, he should have. You know, because he's like, this is what it was. It's like, dude, you, you're just speculating. You don't know that, <laughs> you know? So it is. And it's, 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 it's fine because at the bottom of it all, the very foundation is there's a love for what my father brought to the industry. Like there's a love for what Bruce Lee brought to my father who brought it to the industry, you know? And, uh, and, and that's where AJ is coming from. But sometimes we have to look at the world from space and yeah. say, so, oh yeah, look, there's not one light. There's billions of lights. Mm. Oh my! What did you, I do? You know <laughs> what I I think is important is like, and you made a good point. And I <laughs> hope everybody finds this in their life. You know when the lights are out or whatever. Like, look, Jordan's got the Michael Jordan's got the court. Van Damme's got the dojo. Like for me, you know, if I won a billion dollars, right? I'm I'm so comfortable. I can do anything. I mean, obviously, money is freedom. I wouldn't really change much um, than what I did today. Like I'm still going to be in the gym for hours, lifting weights. I'm still going to be practicing my martial arts. I'm still going to be stretching. I will always have that, whether I'm, I'm completely broke or I'm a billionaire and it's, that's what gives me happiness. So like you said, you know, Van Damme, yes, he's this, uh, you know, action movie star guy, but look, it's the dojo and that, that kind of stuff keeps you grounded too. Yes. And it takes you back when you go too, too far. Um, uh, it's the same with Arnold and Jim, like with you, what you were saying now. Uh, you know, that's, uh, my grandpa told me, he said, Chris, no matter what happens in your life, whether you are successful in your craft in terms of people knowing, recognition, and wanting to see your films, whether it's a filmmaker or in front of a line camera, whatever it is, um, or you don't, you're not successful, it, either, either or, always take care of your body, always take care of your health. Because you'll be sane, you'll be balanced, and you'll find inner peace. Trust me. At first, it will be hard because you'll be thinking about, you know, you're young, you're hungry, the world is your oyster, all that. But then as we get older, we start to realize through experience. 
what really matters is this temple and when we get hurt physically and then it hurts our morale and then it hurts our spirit that domino effect mm -hmm. really really makes you either go ah! or okay how am i going to survive and that's that's what i think my father's been through michael jordan's been through and everyone's been through You're, you've been through it in some way shape or form and we will go through it again it's not over we're still very young both of us and we have a lot of years ahead of us and so we have to take that awareness into consideration mm. you know uh, it's something that uh that uh it's not it's all it's it's ingrained in all of us it's pre-programmed in all of us it's just our awareness like my father used to say aware aware well he was he was right because it's how, how do you live your life not being aware like i mean it's as simple as that i mean I'm, you throw a tomato at me i'm going to try to dodge it you know <laughs> I mean, i'm not going to be aware of it because i choose not to listen to the word aware because that celebrity said it and tmz said it was stupid and now i want to be cool this society makes you so unaware it's crazy <laughs> it's, it's the reverse man you know but uh yeah you have to find your you have to find your foundation it's mm -hmm. important foundation well, what means something to you you know david like you have your thing and that must be respected by by you first and people who get to know you absolutely no nope. well great talk man great talk oh, chris thanks so much <laughs> for yeah, all man. your time my pleasure thank, thank you so you much it's course. gonna be really amazing to get this out there cool and, that I could uh, be the, the fact that you don't do many of these makes it even more special oh thank uh, again you. I'm, I'm i'm you know so happy and, and honored <laughs> thank you man and, and and thanks for being so cool about everything and so open-minded because that's what makes these conversations easier for people like me and um and you know that go through a daily struggle of of uh reminding themselves that uh you know you're, you're not your father you know, just because well it's more like thank you for being so cool about it because obviously some of the stuff's in that video like if they were saying that about me i'd be like you know it's like dude that's you man you know? of course of course we get angry of course we get like triggered but it's at that moment where you have to think about the greater context going back to outer space again mm -hmm. does this little thing matter what this one guy said about me no because there's a million aj saying a million bad things about me right now and it doesn't matter because i know who i am and and so i'm going to give time to someone like david who actually is more open-minded than someone like AJ and has a platform that is going out there and doing his best to spread news about truth. Why not? Why not try to help the world realize who I am? Maybe in some way that will make me feel better too, you know, and maybe we'll learn something from each other in the process, which I think is what's happened here today. Yeah. I think it's mutually beneficial, which is the way, you know, everything should be. Yeah, man. Absolutely. 